I think it probably chose me a little bit. I mean, I started off at the BBC and I had an attachment in the sports department. And obviously, when you first join a department like that, you don't start directing. You start, I was an assistant producer and I worked on a program called Match of the Day. It's pretty famous in the UK. Um, and I spent time in editing stories and doing this and that and everything else. And then eventually, after about a couple of years, I had a chance to um, go and direct some small OBs, like three or four cameras. Um, got a chance for that and did quite well. Got a break where one of the bigger games, somebody was ill and I was the nearest person to get to this game. <laughs> and so I was thrown into it pretty full on and did OK, which is thankfully to the people I worked with, really the cameramen. And then it just went from there. I think the thing to say is that, you know, when you look at all the jobs in sports producing and directing and everything else, you know, when you first start, you're not probably quite sure what you want to do. And there were far more capable people than me in, in the department, but they didn't fancy or didn't enjoy the live element of directing. You know, the fact is, you know, you get one shot at it and whatever. So I think temperament matters a bit. But I actually enjoyed that. And that's how I, so I carried on from there and got other opportunities. Well, I suppose the, the big football matches are, are, are come to mind. I mean, <clears throat> I've done three Champions League finals, and the one I remember most is probably the first one when Real Madrid played Bayer Leverkusen in Scotland and Glasgow. And there was the famous Zidane goal, which was a, probably one of the best goals ever. In Champions League finals and so that I remember that obviously cup finals in the UK and obviously World Cups in football and um, obviously some I've done some massive world title fights involving some pretty brilliant boxers in the UK and then away from football um, some royal occasions and you know I'm, I did Diana's funeral Princess Diana's funeral or Queen Mother's funeral not the present the, the current Queen's and the um, marriage of Kate and William. And they're all quite special because of the audience in the UK and everything else and around the world. Well, I think every every sporting event, every certainly every football match, certainly and sometimes boxing, there is a story in this. And sometimes the story evolves because people get involved in altercations and the managers get involved. So you, you, you have to read the story. But I think one of the most important things is you need to know before the game starts what the likely stories could be. Is a player coming back to play in a, against the team he played for? Is the manager doing the same thing? There has been thing said in the press that, that uh, between players that have an interest or have a, a side issue. So I think you need to know that story first. And then when the game goes, you need to recognise stories that are happening during the game. Well, different sports are, uh, are, are different, <laughs> and so, uh, but field sports or arena sports like football, hockey, um, things with a, a, a similar in that you have a, a camera one shot, which is your main shot, and all goes from that with the close-ups and everything else. Boxing is different, although you have a master shot. There's a lot more master shots in boxing, the ringside cameras and everything else. So it is slightly different in sport, and obviously. You know, you take the speeds of different sports. Football's got a certain speed, so you cut it a certain way. If you do ice hockey, for instance, it's so much quicker that you can't get some of the cuts in. So you just adapt your style to the sport you've got and the speed of the sport. I, I think every director has his own style, um, uh, but in a broad parameter of, of guidelines. I mean, if you're doing a, a World Cup or European Championship, you normally have sort of meetings with all the directors because the idea is not to make it look too different but there are differences in the way people approach it I mean, you know there's it's quite common knowledge that maybe the uk directors use replays certainly emotional replays differently than the french directors neither is right or wrong but so there is a difference but i think in terms of um, there are certain things you always have to do. In other words, you have to be careful where you put your replays in and everything else, regardless of what nationality, what sort of person you are. But yeah, each each director has a different style, I'm sure of that. Um, in terms of the, 
live direction course. Uh, the interesting about that is that we've taken this course around the world. There have been people from all over the world trying to do this. And obviously, the most important thing is that it's a theory course, but also thanks to EVS, there's an element of actually getting to do it because with the simulators that EVS provide, we've got chances to actually, having talked about what we do, to actually give the students a chance to actually do it, which is unique because there's nothing else, unless, you, unless you've had a go, you don't know. And after that, you've had some students who say, this is not for me, I never want to be this. And some people who really love it and, and really want to embrace it. 